Hi everyone, yet another model. <laughs> this is something I'd started working on. I'm gonna be working on the in-between videos. Doing a lot of sanding on it. And what it is, uh, is a Byron's Originals F86H. It's, it was desperately in need of a facelift, so I started sanding on, on it uh, today. And got, as far as you can see there, and it's sanded up to here on on my side. On the port wing here, it's completely sanded and done. I haven't done, as you can see, I haven't done the starboard wing or the rear half of the empennage. And I still got three quarters of this side to do in the bottom and the stabs and stuff. But let me tell you a little bit about it. Like I said, it's an F86H, wingspan's 57 inches. The wing area is 684 inches. The length is 58 and a half inches. The weight is 11 pounds when it's done. And it only takes a five channel. It's powered with a biro, uh, yeah, it's called a biro jet. And it looks like this. It's missing a part, I don't have it on here. It's the engine mount part. It has a horseshoe -like type thing that holds uh, the engine on here, which is a 91 OS and the fan unit and it goes like this it faces the back it it's a pusher it's supposed to develop around 11 pounds thrust but eh, I'm not too sure about that I do have a second power plant that I thought about and it's this one here this is a Dynamax with an OS Max 91 on it and you can see the the size difference I mean there's a big difference in size here and uh, either way I have to go would mean that I need to make a new uh, tailpipe on the inside. The, the one that was in there is like flimsy paper plastic type stuff and it shudders when it when you fire up the motor is kind of funny but I'll probably make it out of fiberglass and roll it make it thin roll it to the size I want tape it and then uh, polyester resin and fiberglass it into one piece oh let's see what else can i tell you about it it has cracks in the fuselage i've been finding it's kind of like a a mystery hunt with sandpaper the more i go the more i'm finding that was been that's been broken or or uh, patched up and there's so much paint on here that the panel lines when i sand the paint flush the panel lines disappear so I'm going to have to redo the panel lines or take a Dremel tool and clean out the bridges. I'm not sure which way I'm going to go. I may end up just laying some crepe tape down and using some primer and making new lines, which would be interesting. I'm thinking I'm going electric, though. It just sounds really interesting to me. I've never done electric. Uh, I don't know much about it. I've been researching it in the last couple days. And finding it's going to cost, finding it, finding out it's going to cost me a ton of money to to get a plane this size with an electric ducted fan going on it and uh, I don't know if you guys know a shortcut cheap way to go let me know <laughs> I'm all ears uh, I'm wide open for suggestions on an, on an electric power plant there is one person I'm thinking about getting a hold of uh, and uh, finding picking his brain because he's an electric guy nitro guy he builds that's a plus <laughs> but this is it my hands are killing me my arm is tired so I'm gonna give up on this for today clean all this dust off there must be a pound of a paint dust on this table so let me clear this off and get this plane out of the way and more than likely I'll come back fresh tomorrow morning because it's getting kind of late and uh, start up on the Cougar under the canopy part D. See you in a few. Kits I think are the way to go because you don't have that cookie cut. Actually, fiberglassing, painting, uh, if you roll it forward, just kind of press it like this. Hard as a brick bed for a leading One last thing on tip blocks is that you want to cut outside the line. Say Cougar build part eight, the formers. We are on step 29 in the manual. Welcome back everybody. size version 
Now to start off, I have to make a correction on the wingspan of that F-86 and it's 58 and a quarter inches. Not 58 and a half, 58 and a quarter. All right, this is what we're working on so far. I couldn't resist putting it, you know, assembling it like this and taking a look and seeing what I have. And it looks pretty good. Uh, not bad for a fantasy type cockpit. Because you got to remember, this is not any kind of scale. It's just showing you scale techniques in a fantasy cockpit. That's basically what I'm, what I'm trying to achieve here. Get this stuff out of the way. We're done with the two packs. And on the headrest or the backrest, I put some marks on here. I'm going to zoom in and show you where I want the rivets. So let me bring the, the camera in a little bit and show you what I have. Now each one of those little black dots represent where a rivet's going to go. And on the other side, I've already done the rivets, you can probably see them. And those are the yellow tight bond rivets. And that's what I had in that little bottle with the little nozzle on it. And what it is is tight bond mixed with water till I get a, until I get a consistency that will drip out the way I want it to make a rivet. So I'll demonstrate a little bit of that on some paper and show you uh, a little bit of the riveting. I have my bottle of tight bond and I gave you the, the number of the bottle and where to buy this earlier in a different, another video. And I'll show you a little bit of the riveting. I'm going to start right over here. And you can see the height of it at the angle that you're at. And you can motor along pretty good just by how fast it drips out. If you want it to be smaller than those, then you'll have to make a thicker mix and squeeze a little harder on the tube. But I have mine watered down to a point where it just flows out. And if I just let it sit, I can make a huge rivet any size I want. And you can see that. But I just tip the bottle and just touch it. The quicker you touch it, the smaller the rivet. All right. Let me get this stuff out of the way and I'm gonna start on the, on the side of the headrest. I'll get started here, get this centered. You probably can't see the dots, but, well you can on some of them, but I'm gonna start on this corner here. I don't wanna make too big of rivets. And if some of them don't look right, which some of them don't, I'll remove those, just wipe them off and uh, start over. That one's not in the right place. Okay, the ones I don't want, I'm going to just wipe them out. I have to get a paper towel here. And they do dry pretty quick. You'd be kind of surprised. I don't think it really matters on if they're correct or not. Some are just the wrong size. Like this one. I'm going to have to wipe off the ones on this corner. Okay. Wipe some more off. Try it again. That's the beauty about tight bond. If you use another glue like a CA, you got one shot. Oh, that one's flowing, so I'm going to have to do some shaking up with my glue. That just shows you how many times you can actually do this over and over and over. Okay, there it is. Oh, missed one. Alright, good enough. Now it's all done. Don't have to worry about it no more. Once it's dry, I'm gonna sand them, sand the roundness off of it a little bit, give it a little bit of flatter look, but they'll still be raised and that's gonna give it a nice effect. You'll see when I, I get to the painting. Rivets are dry now. 
I did quite a few of them. I'm just going to do these last three. And all I do is just rub it real gentle. Make sure the peaks are gone. There's a couple more yet. Have to be done. I don't push too hard on them. That feels pretty good. Little one up here. All right. That's it. That's really all there is to the sanding. Just lightly rub the 320 sandpaper over the top and they smooth out real nice. And now it's time for paint. And I set up my vise with a piece of wood up here just to kind of hold it up while I'm spraying it. I'm going to use my little airbrush. Showed you about that before. And I also glued sticks. Little quarter inch square stringer. Cut it up into little sections to hold this. And I'm going to put these in the vise also and spray them one at a time along with this. And they're easy to just to, when you want to take them off, you just crack them off, clean it up a little bit, and that's done. All right. I was going to show you how to do a little paint mixing. Um, I wanted to do more on paint and color matching and stuff like that when I get to the main uh, part of the painting of the Cougar fuselage and wings. So I'll get more into uh, mixing colors then. And that'll be with epoxy. This is just standard everyday tester's paint. A whole, uh, I can't even remember how much they were, a dollar something for the jar. Toothpicks. Oh, forgot my toothpicks. Had to find them. <laughs> I had them buried. Throw out a few of them here. And I use these just for mixing. And these are well separated. Bought these at the craft store. Matter of fact, I picked them up at Hobby Lobby. It's a few miles closer than going to my hobby shop, which I really like. I like going there more, but the selection of paint is unfortunately better at Hobby Lobby than my regular uh, provider of hobby parts. And let's see, I'm going to need, I'm going to go with the same amount I mixed last time. So I'm going to mix my drops right into here. I'll mix them the same way I did before. And I'm just going to use this uh, stir stick, dental stir stick. What I do is I dip it in. That's three. Four, five, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's my twenty drips of color. Set him over there. I won't need any more of that, I don't believe. And I don't need to uh, knock this off and make it a a different color because it's actually the color that I want and uh, I have thinner right here that I spilt everywhere clean off my since I spilt it I might as well clean up my mess on my stick and uh, and I'll do about two-thirds as many drips of uh, thinner Two, three, four, five, fifteen. I'm gonna add two more drops. Three quarters is just I don't, don't I don't think it's enough. Okay, there's seventeen drops to twenty drops of color. Seventeen drops of thinner, twenty drops of color, and that makes it a very very loose mix. See if I can show you how. Well, guess not. I don't have to wait till I pour it. <laughs> it drips off before I can even get it above the cup. Mix it up really well. 
You don't need to let it sit or anything. You just mix it up. I'm going to see if I have enough to do both of these and that from beginning to end. Now I'll be able to show you how, how thin it is, how fast it comes out. What I want to do is run, this airbrush is a little sticky, so I'm going to run a little bit of thinner through here and loosen it up. It's just a quirk of this little airbrush. I'm going to dump it in, you can see how thin it really is. Pretty thin. And I'm just going to put a dusting on here. No, don't want to go. I'm just going to have to move around with it. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit and tack up a little bit. And when I come back, I'll finish it off. I've already put on a few more coats, light coats. Uh, this is gonna be the final coat on this side. And I'll hurry up and get this done. That ought to do it for this guy. I'm gonna look him over real good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, I can't set this down until I get this out of here. Because <laughs> I don't have a, an airbrush holder like I should. Let's see, how am I gonna do this? This has to be wide enough to, to catch it. Okay, you see I left it kind of light on here, on this side. This is where the headrest is gonna be. I haven't cut that out yet, by the way. But uh, it's fully coated. Now I'm gonna do the, the two packs. So give me a second so I can get rid of this and uh, I'll be back and we'll finish this up. Now that the backrest is done, I'll get on these little packs here. Just like before, just a light dusting to start out with. Just fall like that, just enough to change a little bit of color. Set him up here. Same with the little guy. Okay, we'll give that one a rest. Take the big one back off, give him another shot. Let that dry. There's gonna need one more coat after that. Little one again. And now I'm going to let them sit, let that paint tack up real good. And then I'm going to have to mix up some more paint because I ran out. It's going to take a little bit more than I thought. So let me do that and I'll put the finishing coats on these and then I'll be back. Here they are, all three pieces are done. And I tipped the backrest up on an angle so you can see the rivets are there. I'll be using what I used before. 
is this rub and buff. This is silver leaf. I'm going to use it real sparingly on those rivets so they pop out a little bit more. And the bands on these two pieces here are going to be painted in an off white. I was going to just use a flat white, but it looks a little bit too brilliant. And I'd want it a little more subdued. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of mixing on that. Probably add a little black and a little yellow just to uh, send it off, off the main color. So let me change things around here. And I'm going to get started on painting these bands. For this, I'm going to need a toothpick or two or more. Let's see if I can open these things up. Sometimes they don't like to open too well. I was right. And they're going to need a little mixing. As you can see, that white is really white, so I won't be using just plain, plain old white. I have my flat black here. Which I'll probably only need maybe a drip of because I want to send it off into a grayish white and a little antiqueish color, maybe showing sunlight and deterioration, perhaps. And that's why I'm going to go with some yellow. And this is a Model Master yellow. When it comes to enamel, I haven't found where it makes a whole lot of difference where you where you can't mix them, so. I'm going this route. This is a product by Model Master. It's not testers, but I think the colors are nicer with the Model Master. They're not so basic. All right. Now to mix, um, I don't need much to do those bands, so I probably won't go the full nine yards I'm just not counting drops I'm just gonna do this by eye so I don't need a whole lot a few more drops I guess yeah a touch more okay and that is that Put the cat back on there. Get that out of the way. And uh, let's go with some black, just one drip. One drip can go a long ways. My little stir stick here. And you'll probably be able to see in the in a second the color. Well, can I tip it enough? Now you can see it's going to turn into a gray. I might need to put more white in there. Because one drip of black, like I said, goes a long, long ways. So I have to bring my white back over here and dump some more white into it. I think I'm not going to go with drips this time. I'm going to go with a jar drip. about six more drips see how that works out that's a little brighter gray that might still be too gray for me see it's kind of a an off grayish white it's not bad really it could stand to be a little bit lighter but I'm going to try to put a little yellow in there and perhaps that will lighten it up just a little bit. Should only need like one drop of this yellow because it's a pretty strong color too. One drip of yellow. Yeah, definitely going to need more white. One drip of red and one drip of blue, and it should be a nice brownish color. I could go that route too, but 
We'll go with the white. If that doesn't do it, then what I'll do is dump white into it. Or dump white into another container and use a couple of drips of this. This is like a, almost a, uh, that yellow is not really yellow. Evidently, it's more towards the, I don't know, might have a touch of red in it. So I am going to abandon this. And I want to go with a more of a white, because that's almost a green. That should not be a green. So more than likely this black is not real black either. Let me grab another cup here. And I'll start with white. Okay. Now we have our white. Now we'll drip in some of this. Maybe just one drip. See where it takes us. Mixing colors is something you just have to try and experiment with. There is no set rules. Oh, there's there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Just a shade off white. I don't know if you can see that. Let me... Uh, I don't know if there's a way to do this and show you exactly the colors that I'm mixing. Um, hold on a second here. I might be able to do something. A chunk of Monaco. That'll work. Now, can you see that off-white a little bit? Maybe. Regardless, this is more of an antique white, and that's what I was looking for. So it went from a, a greenish color. Let me put this down. Greenish color to a whitish off-white color compared to... Uh, <laughs> Well, this white is almost monocoat white because I can put my finger on monocoat and I can't even see the print. So we got this versus that. I don't know if you can see it too well, but it's a, it's a shade off. It'll look good. To get these painted, I'm going to have to take the sticks off. Like I said, you just snap them off. They come off clean. Didn't even just left a little glue residue in there. And there's not much, I'm not going to worry about it. And you'll definitely need, if you're going to do this, need some brushes. I went down to the craft store and picked up some brushes. I wanted to find detail brush that would make it a little harder for me to make a mistake. So I think I'm going to go with this guy here. This is a, a 3 ot Fine tip, uh, where's the package? I can tell you a little bit more. Oh, uh, no, it really didn't tell me a whole bunch about it. Just says round, white nylon, three, with a forward slash zero. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not an artist. I just do this for fun. <laughs> You can tape these off and spray them with an airbrush, but the, I'd have to wait a long time for the, the paint to thoroughly dry. So I'm just going to go at it with a brush. It's probably going to take more than one coat. And this is going to be very boring to watch. So I'm going to pause the video. And you can see I got it started. And I'll come back when I have it completely done. 
Well, there's the two finished packs. The color is just about right. It's not as brilliant as a super white, but it's a, just about what I want because the, the regular white would have been this white. And I think that is just too, too much of a white to be in that small of a space. So I think that flat white did quite well that I mixed up. I think it's time to uh, start gluing parts on. I think we'll start with the the shoot side first. And that will go on here, something like that. And one thing that has to be figured out is what kind of glue. There is one more piece I need to put in here I should tell you about. And it's a divider between these two packs. And uh, I forgot about it. <laughs> And now again, it's gonna to have to be an afterthought, not a big deal. Otherwise you see that hole, <laughs> no biggie. So the type of glue I'm gonna use is gonna be the good old medium CA. And hopefully the nozzle's not plugged. This nozzle just about had it. I forgot that I don't need to go to the top. Wipe that off. And this gets kind of got to be set down on the bench so everything goes level. Just like that. And this little packet sits in top. Do a little test fit here. I want it to go back just a hair. Okay. I'll glue this thing in. All right, bombs away. It's about like that. Oh, it smeared the glue a little bit. It's a little shiny now, but that's all right. I can touch that up with a brush. Well, there it is, back and top sides now i'm gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes let this glue dry thoroughly before i start putting on some rub and buff as you can see i did a little bit more than just put rub and buff on i pretty much completed the seat and i'll it was pretty uh, basic stuff so i'll explain it pretty simple i'll take the canopy off here and nothing's glued in it. I just set it in there just to see what it looks like. I couldn't resist. And I'll turn it for you. Uh, and then I can explain things as I go here. The instrument panel itself, you've seen that already. I'll move that out of the way. The pilot is my old pilot. He's not gonna be used. And let's get to the seat. There's the seat. Looks like it's a little dusty here. Now, the headrest, and the back piece, and the shoulder part of the seat, this is all one piece of balsa wood. I just carved it out of a quarter inch sheet. Cut it out to the size I wanted. You could have used three pieces, I would imagine, and been just as easy. And before I glued it in there, I went and I used the spot glazing putty and it covered the whole thing in a real light coat of that to fill the wood grain, sanded it, got out my little uh, airbrush and used flat black on it. And uh, let's see, what else did I do? Well, I, before I glued that in, I put this yellow piece in here. This is actually a white piece of SIG coverall cut to the size of the piece of cloth that the, that the pilot would drag over top of his head holding onto these two loops. And uh, all I did was uh, cut a little piece of that, fold it in half, glued both sides behind the seat against the, the backrest, 
And like I said, I painted this yellow. This is just a piece of string, CA glued into a loop on both sides. Then I hardened it a little bit with, uh, with a CA. Wrap red thread around it to give it that emergency pull look. Um, that's pretty much all I did to that. And you can see I did use a rub and buff just very lightly on all the rivets. And I actually highlighted the corners so you can actually see the corners, otherwise it, it kind of blends in. I'll show you the other side. Looks pretty much the same. And I didn't paint underneath this either. And that sits all the way back against the turtle deck. The pilot, he sits in there. He's a little wide, so I had to cut into the the square supports. You can probably see the little loop cut right there. And the hose, you remember seeing the hose when it was just a uh, piece of nye rod with string wrapped around it and painted black. Well, that's what it looks like installed. And to me, that looks just like a rubber hose. And that's where the cluster goes. And it'll all be glued in. And the canopy sits on there just like that. And you can see the frame comes right to the edge of the turtle deck at the top. I painted back beyond that lip because I noticed on my other Cougars in the past, if you don't paint it back that far, you can actually see a little bit around the corner. It reflects off of the canopy on the inside. You can see that it wasn't done far enough to uh, cover up all the plastic. And it gives you plenty of area to glue to. Uh, in the front, you can see the canopy frame comes up a little high, so you can't see nothing in there. But I still painted the top of the rail. And in the front where it glues on, right here, I left it bare so the glue can attach to the wood. And the front of the canopy frame and the wind on the windshield is up here. So you can't see that I didn't go all the way to the end with the instrument uh, housing or the console. So that, that's hidden pretty well. I think what I'll do now for you is zoom out. I'm going to pull this stuff out and show you basically everything I used to get it to this point right here. Just to show you some of the stuff that I use. You remember the 10,000 styrene? sheet plastic, scalpel of course, quarter inch balsa, rub and buff, olive drab testers paint, flat black. This is part testers and part model master, but it's flat black. And yellow was from model master. Tight bond mixed with water to make the rivets. Plastic weld to attach the sheets. And I use these things. This is different. This is new. This is the tab for that. It is uh, called a craft cotton swab. It's triangular and extra small, and there's 50 of them in a package. This is made by Tamiya. I'll put that up on the screen so you can see it a little better. And what they are are these little tiny swabs like that. They're triangular in their tip and what I use this for is a rub and buff. I can get the, get the rub and buff just on the edge of it and uh, wipe it real gently with one side putting on the color and wipe it off with the other side. And I found these over at Hobby Lobby. They're, I can't remember the price to be honest with you. And the model number of it or the item number is 87105 and it has two stars and 208. Pretty cool. They work really well. I used them to dab paint where I needed to do some touch up. An interesting find at the at the craft store. And of course, use my medium CA glue and a pencil. And this is uh, the coverall. It's a fabric very tight weave and to get the cut on that yellow piece 
I used the plastruck and I drew a line around it with using the plastruck like this. I'll show you. Hopefully you can see it. I'll hold it up. And I just run this down. See that little line that it leaves? When I did that, it stopped the fabric from fraying and getting this kind of a dangly stuff. So I could cut it with a pair of scissors real well. So I just made a real straight line in the shape that I wanted and I cut it out that way. And when I was done, I went ahead and coated the whole piece of fabric with the glue and then I painted it. Worked out well. And red thread. I'll put it on top of here so you can see it. That's why I wrapped the little loops and the for the cord. This stuff, you can use any kind of cord really, as, as long as it's the right diameter. But this came from, uh, where in the world did it come from? I can barely read it. It's, it's a fishing line and they call it squidding line. Uh, I got this out of my dad's old tackle box. I have no idea. Probably used in trolling or something, but it is a fish line and it is a, uh, it's definitely a braid and it's kind of a waxy plastic coated or something, but it makes good loops. And with a little bit of, of uh, medium CA, it holds that loop quite well. Well, everyone, there's a final effect. Not quite final because I have to glue everything in, but you know what it's going to look like. I'm not going to do anything more under the cock into the cockpit except glue the parts down permanently. I think it came out okay for a fictitious comp cockpit um, or a fantasy cockpit or whatever you want to call it. It just adds that little bit of flavor to the airplane that it normally wouldn't have. Uh, it's something that I always thought was fun to do. I wanted to teach you a little bit of scale technique so you can utilize it if you ever decide to build a scale plane. You have a little bit of insight on riveting, highlighting, weathering, uh, making instruments to uh, even little switches. I know you can go buy these in in, uh, I can't remember the name of the places, but they sell complete instruments at certain scale sizes. And But I think it's much more fun to do it myself. And if I can make it look as, almost as good as theirs that are manufactured, then I'm, I'm happy. So uh, I showed you all the parts I used. Uh, I think I've explained everything pretty well. If you have any questions, just shoot me a message. Uh, I keep on forgetting to mention that the club that I'm in, the Gladwin Area RC Club, we have a Facebook page if you want to look us up. Uh, like I said, any questions, go ahead and ask them. I'll answer them the best I can. If I can't, then I might be able to direct you someplace where you can get an answer. And if I can't do that, then I don't know. <laughs> so until the next time, have a good one.